Hi everybody, welcome to the homestead. Well, spring is around the corner and this spring we have decided that we would like some new layer chickens. Now, a while ago, we downsized our chicken flock a little bit. A lot of our hens were old, but I am actually missing having a lot of chickens. So we've decided to expand our flock. So this morning, Kevin and I got out the incubator, washed it all up, plugged it in, added a little water, so that when we go get some new chicken eggs to incubate, it's all set up. Now, I have a friend that lives in the area that raises the most beautiful chickens. She has great barnyard mix, but she also isolates some of her chickens so that the breed remains pure. And today we're gonna go pick up some eggs from her. We're gonna bring, we're gonna pick up 18 eggs. And also she has a pretty awesome chicken setup with three different kinds of chicken houses. They're completely different than what we do here on the homestead. And I thought it would be an awesome opportunity for you guys to maybe get some more ideas about what could possibly work for you. So let's go get our eggs and check out some new chicken houses. Well, you guys, we're here with my friend, Delyn. She lives uh, kind of nearby us, maybe 20 minutes away in a, near a small town called Squires. And for a living, she is a boat mechanic, which I think is absolutely amazing and super well, cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a long journey. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> if you're interested, hey, we'll get you her phone number. If you're in the area, she fixes boats and she's pretty awesome. But anyway, she also does a lot of things that we do and, and she raises most of her own food, uh, does a ton of gardening. We actually have um, a booth next to each other mm -hmm. at the farmer's market mm -hmm. where we sell plants in the spring and veggies as they're available all through the summer. Uh, but Delyn also sells a bunch of chickens and she has a ton of chickens. She takes care of them <laughs> amazingly. Uh, she breeds them. Um, and either sells them at the farmer's market, sells their eggs, that kind of thing. So I'm so excited to have you here today to see really the setup that she has here with amazing different types of housing than we have and maybe that you have seen. So let's go take a look at some of her setups, then we'll get our eggs and we'll get them home in the incubator. All right. <laughs> Normally this pen, we, we have it set up where the, they can have a yard, have a safe place to be. Um, normally we keep our roosters in here so that we can finish feeding them out and get them the size that we want. Or if we end up with too many, well, sometimes we, we go ahead and butcher them a little early. Meat is meat. But, um, but anyway, we, we're finished with roosters for, the, for right now. Obviously I'm making more chickens, but we're done with the roosters. Um, this we've turned it into a place for the Easter eggers. So this is uh, their first week in here. So I know a lot of you know that for our chicken meat, we choose to raise Cornish cross chickens, but Delyn and her husband have decided to move away from that and to raise their extra roosters up for meat. Mm -hmm. And by having this separated area over here, um, it keeps them away from the rest of the bunch and she can grow them out uh, to the size that she wants and yep. then butcher them for the freezer. Yep, exactly. And, and we, do, we do take roosters to the market. I mean, we give them, we give them a fair shot. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a nice way to be able to separate those that you don't want uh, with the rest of your flock where they're going to be making trouble, trying yep. to breed, exactly. um, or just fighting with the other roosters. So I thought that this is a pretty uh, smart idea to keep them separated. And I want to go in just a little bit closer so you guys can see the, the house area that she has and the construction because it might give you guys some ideas also. So this is kind of a basic design that you'll see on her place over and over with just kind of di different variations. And it's super easy that she used these cattle panels and then created a frame on the bottom. And then you'll see as we go around that there are different ways that she's kept them out of the rain and that kind of thing. But this is a super uh, easy way to keep them 
um, out of the elements. You see the, some chicken wire here that keeps out the, the possums and the raccoons and stuff. But then it also gives her an opportunity to just do different things inside here. Give them a roost, which is a natural roost, which I think is really fun. Now she's got some egg boxes back here uh, for the females that are in here now, but I just think that this is a, a really awesome, creative, cost-effective option for a chicken house. She has three other houses that are similar to the one that we just saw. Um, and you can see that it's still the cattle panel with chicken wire over it. And in these cases, they've used, um, what is this, metal sheeting or what is this still in? It's the tin. tin. It's just the tin. Okay. Anyway, so, so that is put over the top of it to protect them from the weather. Now, on the outside right now, there's plastic that helps with the wind, but in the summer, when it's hot, you don't want that. You can just take it off. So I think that's really smart. My husband went ahead and made these very, very simple to make roost. Um, he also came up with the idea to use the two by fours on the inside to help anchor the tin against the cattle panel. Um, works beautifully. Right, and that um, adds a lot of stability. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Yeah, we, we've never had a problem with wind taking the cattle panels off, lifting them up, nothing. This one was finally called the mob pen because at one point we had a lot of baby chickens. And so he put in these great big roosts. And now you can fill them with I can fill them with more chickens. More 96 chickens. more baby chickens, that was an approved number. <laughs> so you can see inside these others are you know, relatively the same. Now, the difference in this one is that she's actually divided it into two separate pen areas. So if she needed to quarantine or if she's looking for something specific with breeding, if there are, you know, three or four chickens she wants to breed together to get a certain combination or to keep some breeds true, she can separate them for breeding um, back there and have two separate areas. There's just a lot you can do with this type of versatile pen. And there are two beautiful hens about to lay in there. The one in the first box, we call her the dumb one. <laughs> and uh, the one in the center box is actually one of our new chickens. Young, young chickens. This might even be her first egg. Wow. Yes, yes, might be her first egg. So here's one of the chicken tractor style houses that she has for the chickens. Um, it's very basic, would be easy to construct, relatively inexpensive, and I think that this is also a really nice design. It looks pretty light, so if you put wheels on it, you could roll it, but it'd probably be light enough that with two people you could lift it and move it over. And this style is so cute. It has a little house in the back here so they can get in there and then there's a little run. Uh, this is basically another kind of chicken tractor, but I just think that this is so cute. Uh, in the summer, this top portion is completely open for some awesome ventilation. Um, and now that it's winter, they've put some of this tin sheeting on top of it to keep them dry. But I want to open the inside so that you guys can see how cute it is in there. Hopefully none of them fly out. But it's just so cute in there. Oh, there, there's a little hen roosted up there. Oh, that's Susan, Delin says. I think I want to live in there. I think I want to move in. It's so cute. If I were that little, I would definitely want to live in there. This pen over here is the exact same style as the one we just we just saw, but it, it's two of them together. So it's split down the middle and has two separate compartments for the different chickens. Now, another thing you can see up here is that there's really good ventilation, which is really important in the summer. The hot air will rise and come out the top to keep them cool inside there. It'll be nice and shaded. This kind of a pen is really nice when you're wanting to separate your chickens and breed true to their breed. Uh, and I think that this is a really great idea. The other thing about this pen that it's the only one that we have that's like it, this has a hard floor. Um, with the hard floor, we both like being able to use that for the baby chicks when it's time for them to go outside. We like to put them out here because again, it has a hard floor so their, their feet are not actually on the ground. Okay, so the hard floor is on the house part. Yes, the hard floor is on the house on the part, but not part. on the run. Okay. Nope, just the house part. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I think they're warmer. 
One of the things that's important for Delin because she is breeding, she's trying to breed true to the different breeds of chickens is to keep them separated away from the other roosters so that they're only breeding with one kind of rooster. Now, when you also want your chickens to have an area to free range, and you may not want them just in a tiny little run area like this, there's, there's a way that you can do that. And I wanna show you what she's doing over here. So she has one of those chicken tractor, double chicken tractor style houses together where she has one, she has Rhode Island Reds in one side and a different breed on the other side. She can open one side to let that kind of chicken out in this penned in area and that day the other chickens stay on their side and vice versa. So it gives her an opportunity to still let her chickens free range every other day, but then she can also isolate the breeds for the breeding. I stuck another one in there. Okay. Since you are short, one of the big pretty brown ones. Okay. And the one I stuck in there was hatched out yesterday. Um, these are the eggs that I have selected for you. Okay. One of the things that you're looking for, it could be an old wives tale, but I've read it many, many times, but um, before you're hatching, you want to do more of the rounder eggs. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of people that'll actually go through and weigh their eggs and a lot of stuff like that. Okay. One of the reasons for that is obviously you're not going to hatch out a double yogurt. So anything really, really giant, I don't hatch sure. them. So anyway, I do those. So now why are you choosing ones that are more round on the bottom? The, the more likely that I might have a hen. Okay, so you're trying to sex them yes, before before hatching. Okay. So pointy um, eggs are roosters. Pointy eggs are roosters, yes. Yes. And and actually I have a tendency to I'm starting to do more hens. Mm -hmm. And of course my chicks are so young right now, they're only a week old. Too early to tell, right. but I see a lot of nice little round butts in there, and that's <laughs> usually a hen. <laughs> Well, good. So were you trying to make sure that all of these were hens or did you maybe pick out a special rooster egg for us? I think you might have all hens. Do you hey. want, would you like a rooster egg? Hey, you know what? Chances are there'll probably be at least one rooster egg. And we've got two roosters at and, the house. And I'll have roosters. True, true. The eggs that are in here, these big pretty brown ones, those are the Copper Marins girls. And let's see. That, looking at it, that is very possible that that is an Australope cross and could be one of the girls that was running in the yard. Now these, this egg is small. Mm -hmm. These are the Benny eggs. There's, okay. I actually have three, uh, two of them in there for you. Okay. Susan is a, and she's, she's bred to a partridge. Mm-hmm. Cochin. They are partridge cochins. There's Susan, Day, and Sean Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Partridge. Tridge. Okay. <laughs> and then and then Tender's egg is one of our he's one of our banny crosses. So you've you've put in here a few bantam eggs mm -hmm. and I asked you to do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. Why on earth would I want bantam eggs when they're oh. so small or bantam chickens? Bantam chickens are great hatchers. They're great sitters. I don't know of a bantam that doesn't brood. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start your own flock and have not necessarily use a incubator, mm -hmm. you could use them as incubators mm -hmm. and i and, and believe me the bantams that are here i'm going to use them as incubators well thank you delin for welcome. hand picking these you're welcome now i want to let you guys know that delin really has the most beautiful birds that we've seen definitely the best birds at the farmer's market if you're in our local area and you're interested in getting some uh young hens or young chickens uh she oftentimes will bring them to the farmer's market and sell them there so uh she has great birds and i highly recommend them so Lynn, thank you so much. You're welcome. For opening thank, up thank your you. place. Thank you for coming and, over. And uh, hopefully we can give you also some boat business. That would be wonderful. Yeah, you can just that call would, her and make an appointment. Absolutely, that would yeah. be wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, we need to get these back into the incubator. Let's go. Okay, we're home safe with these awesome eggs. I'm so excited with the rainbow of colors we have here. I can't wait to see what hatches out of these. Well, let's get started putting these guys into the incubator. I want to move quickly so that they can start getting warmed up in here. We just have a classic foam um, incubator that has a heater and a fan. 
and inside here we have egg turners. So this in here is our egg turner and all of the chicken eggs will go in these little spots. The egg turner trays will move back and forth like that. This is their little motor and that will help, the movement back there will help prevent the yolk from sticking to one particular side inside the egg. I'm just going to put these beautiful eggs in here. So in just 21 days, we'll be able to see how many out of these 18 hatch. But we're gonna have to wait several months to see if Delin's way of sexing the eggs will turn out to be true. Now, remember, she said that she thinks she gave us 18 girls. Let's see how that turns out. You guys, I'm so happy that you joined me today going out to Delin's to pick up our eggs and to see all the different kinds of chicken houses she has out there. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happens with these eggs when they have hatched. If you're enjoying what you're seeing on our channel, make sure to subscribe. And the best way that you can help us out of everything in the whole world is to share our videos with people who are like-minded. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.